Good evening, everyone. Glad to see everyone out tonight here at Olive Branch. Uh, we're back to the Lord by the main service of Lewis. And uh, this is a broadcast being sent out to all of our members. It's not going to be with us yet. Um, we're going to send it out to all of our members and families. We appreciate you and we love you. Uh, just as a reminder, we start back in service uh, here at the church this Sunday. So all those folks that want to be in attendance with us, please come back and see us Sunday. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll have a whole process lined out for everybody uh, so that uh, everybody can sit and be distanced where we need to be, but we're here serving the Lord. So uh, let's uh, send this out to all of our elders as well. Uh, we love all of our elders. Appreciate them. Uh, let's continue to remember our graduates this year. We've got several graduates in the church. Uh, let's pray for them. Ashley and Benny, Anna Allen, and Jeffrey Lawson. Let's pray for them that God will bless them in their journeys. Uh, always send out to our first responders, uh, all of our health care professionals that are working. We appreciate them. Uh, so we're looking forward to the services. So be much in prayer for tonight. Uh, pray for everything that's done. Most often, pray that God touches someone's heart and can see him saved. So let's turn it over to our sectors. There's me up above the shadows, plant my feet on higher ground.
Anyone else have anything on their heart tonight? Church tomorrow night. I don't know why I thought I had to be at church, but just let me get to church tomorrow night. 
I would have been saved. So he knew my heart that night. Sure he knew that I, how bad that I wanted to be saved. Yes. Wednesday night came, and I don't remember what the message was about. I just remember at the end of the message, I was ready. I went forward. I knelt down. And my cousin got saved that night. I didn't even know she was up there. I had no idea. I just knew that that night God saved my soul. Amen. And I've never seen the flames of hell ever again. Yes. I'm thankful for that. Amen. said, I'm glad that uh, not only did he touch me for salvation, but he touches me every day. And, uh, every time that I need it, in every situation that I go through, um, I want to say this, I need a touch from the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's not a moment in my life that I don't need him and his guidance to get me through the day. Right. Uh, it doesn't matter what I face, whether it's just a challenging moment, a challenging time that you're going through just a daily walk that seems like everything's going all right, I still need a touch from the Lord. And uh, I, I'm thankful for that, and I'm thankful that you all sung that song. I really bless my heart. I appreciate you. I appreciate those who follow the Lord tonight. And uh, we want to do our best to do the same. And we want to take our reading tonight from Romans chapter number 7. I'll give you a second to turn there. Those at home that's, uh, that's watching tonight can't be with us. Uh, we love you. Uh, we're praying for you. We appreciate you. And uh, Romans chapter 7 is where we'll take our reading from tonight. We do have several verses of scripture to read uh, to get out what's on our heart. But I'd like to preach the Lord will allow us tonight about a vicious tug of war. A vicious tug of war. Just keep that in your mind. Uh, and we're going to start reading Romans chapter 7. And we're going to start at the 14th verse. For we know that the law is spiritual. But I am carnal. Sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Now then, it is no more I that doeth it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more that I do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? But I love this part. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. And that's where we'll stop reading. We'll have a word of prayer real quick. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity you've given us, Lord, to be in your house. 
We thank you, Lord, for our brothers and our sisters that are gathered with us, Lord. God, and those that are listening tonight, God, uh, by way of this radio, by, uh, if you'll have it, by Facebook, by YouTube, uh, just the sound that's going out tonight, wherever it may be. God, I pray, Lord, that you'll bless those that are under the sound of our voice tonight, God, that you'll encourage them, that you'll strengthen them, that you'll lift them up, God, and help them through whatever they're facing tonight, God. Lord, I pray that you'll just help us, Lord, to be your servant. God, to be willing to do whatever you'd have for us to do. God, help us as a church, uh, Lord, to stand strong and be bold and do the things that are pleasing to you, God. Uh, but help us, Lord, God, as a soldier, to always stand firm. God, to do the things that's pleasing to you, Lord. God, which is our duty and our honor, Lord, we thank you for that, God. But above all, we pray, God, that the loss that's out there, Lord, uh, God, will come to know you, Lord, in a free pardon of sin, God. That they'll forsake themselves and their flesh, Lord, and the things and the cares of this life. God, and just turn over that which is of what you desire, Lord, not their body, Lord, but their soul. God, I pray that you'll strengthen them, God, to step out in faith. God, give them the ability uh, to just mind you, Lord, in that spirit, God, and not mind themselves. Thank you for what you've done, and we thank you for what you're going to do, Lord. We ask these things in your precious name. Amen. I desire your prayers tonight. I want to just give you what God has uh, given us and what we began to read today, God, and study out. Uh, I would say this. When I first read these scriptures, uh, this was the most confusing book of the Bible that I think I've ever read. Uh, this was the worst thing that I thought in my mind, Brother Evan, as I began to read it, that could have been recorded in the Bible because it seemed so confusing. Everything that was said here and everything that was done here seemed to be in some sort of a riddle that I just wasn't grasping. Uh, and it seemed like it was just contradicting itself. And it was going and spinning uh, back and forth, saying the same thing over and over again, uh, just in a different way. And it just got more confusing. And I don't know about any of you, but if you've ever been there before, and you begin to read over scriptures, and you look at it uh, naturally, uh, it can confuse you. It can really tear you up and just kind of boggle your mind a little bit and bring you down uh, because you can't read this book carnally. Uh, you've got to get with God and let him show you things spiritually uh, because this is a spiritual book. It's a great natural book. Uh, Brother Eric, that you can read about war, that you can read about love, uh, that you can read about excitement and battles, you can read about uh, all these different things, but it's just a book that way. I want to look at it much deeper than that. I want to look at it as a spiritual book that talks to this inward man. Amen. I don't need to be appeased on the outside. I need to be strengthened on the inside. Amen. I don't need to gain knowledge out here. I need to gain understanding in my heart. Uh, so I want to say this. Uh, the more I begin to think about that, uh, the more my mind begins to drift. Uh, I don't think about a tug of war, uh, a physical tug of war. Uh, I got most of you that know me uh, and those that are outside uh, uh, listening tonight, but you may know and understand, I do like to be competitive, but I like to have a lot of fun with it. Over the years, we've been a part of a lot of different things. We've come together as churches, we've done youth group Olympics, where all the different churches, they got together, they formed teams, and they worked in one another with friendly competition. I love those days, Eric. I love seeing the churches I get together like that. I love seeing the youth I come together like that. And it went on many, many years. I'm about, about four or five years into this. We had to stop and kind of reboot some things. Why was that? Because the most, I guess, exciting event that we had was the tongue of war. And I'll be honest with you, if you're out there listening tonight, you know who you are. You stacked your team and you stacked the deck. It's all right. We can admit it. It happens sometimes. But why did you do that? Because you wanted to win. Because it was a prize that you were going after. But it was great for the church to walk away with a trophy. It was great for the church uh, to walk away for a ribbon. Uh, but those folks uh, that were pulling uh, in that tug of war, uh, it was a battle. Uh, it was something that was fierce. Uh, I've seen folks I've never seen uh, in my life uh, show up in these churches uh, that were not members 
Uh, we can just say it uh, and be on a team. Uh, uh, now that sounds funny now. Uh, uh, that we can say that. Uh, uh, but back then, uh, uh, boy, it was serious, Eric. Uh, uh, we come together uh, uh, with a mind uh, uh, that we're going to beat you uh, uh, no matter what you give us. Uh, uh, no matter what you try. Uh, uh, we're going to pull harder. Uh, uh, we're going to be stronger. Uh, and we're going to win. Uh, uh, friends, I want to say this today. Uh, in our life, uh, uh, there's a tug of war uh, uh, that's happening every day. Uh, uh, there's a spiritual tug uh, uh, that's happening every day uh, on the inside of man uh, uh, against this flesh uh, on the outside. Uh, it happens, Eric. Uh, uh, no matter how you stack the deck, uh, it's going to happen. Uh, I want to say this. Uh, uh, Paul began to line it out uh, here in Romans. Uh, he began to say, it like this. Uh, I, I knew to do good. Uh, I knew to do right. Uh, uh, but there was a law uh, uh, that came along. Uh, uh, that whenever I showed up uh, uh, to do good, uh, evil was always present. Uh, uh, so in other words, every time uh, I tried to do the right thing, uh, every time I tried uh, uh, to live the right way, uh, uh, something bad uh, uh, began to take place. Uh, uh, there was an aura uh, uh, it would come about uh, and it would begin to pull uh, against the good uh, that I was trying to do. Uh, now Paul uh, is one of the most spiritual uh, men you'll find in the Bible. Uh, he was one of the best preachers uh, I believe that was ever recorded. Uh, and if this man struggled uh, with a warfare, uh, a tongue of war, uh, that means every one of us uh, are susceptible uh, to the same thing. No matter what we look at, no matter how spiritually strong or physically strong we think we are, uh, there's a physical and spiritual tug of war uh, that's happening in our life every day. Uh, no matter what we try, no matter what comes our way, uh, the reality is this, uh, we're going to battle every day of our lives. Uh, we're not going to go just coasting through this life, heaven. Uh, but we're going to have to battle from here till we get home. Uh, uh, church, when Jesus saved us uh, uh, by his blood uh, and by his grace and mercy, uh, he saved us into a warfare. Uh, he saved us into a battle. Uh, he didn't just save us, uh, uh, sit us down uh, and say, well, I'll see you in a little while. Uh, uh, when it's time, you'll hear the trumpet uh, and I'll try and get you. Uh, uh, that's not the way he did it. Uh, he said you're saved uh, unto a good work. In other words, when I saved you, I put something down on the inside that's better than you physically because it's me spiritually. I put something down on the inside that longs to do the right thing. That longs to go and do the right way. That longs to seek after the Spirit. But you got to understand you are in this flesh and the longer we go on this flesh, it seems like the heavier it gets on our body. It begins to weigh us down. It begins to affect us any, both physically, mentally. It affects us in every way. And that warfare is occurring. That which is on the inside is longing to come out, to go home. But that which is here is pulling us down and keeping us uh, uh, intact uh, if you'll have it. Uh, uh, so that's what Paul's saying uh, uh, throughout this process. Uh, uh, for that which I do, uh, I allow not. Uh, uh, so in other words, uh, uh, those things that I know I should do, uh, uh, this flesh, uh, it won't let me do it. Uh, it doesn't mean that I don't want to. Uh, on the inside, uh, I long to do it. Uh, uh, but on the outside, uh, uh, there's a battle. Uh, it's fighting it. A church we're going to have a fight until we get home. But the good news is we're going home. We might have to fight a little while here, but it's just a little a span of time until we get home. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I'll say this as I begin to think about those days and those tug of wars that we had. As my mind drifted back over all the years and of all the teams, uh, there were some strong, fierce teams. 
Now, there were some strong, fierce battles physically in those tug of wars. I remember one year we went undefeated, probably uh, for three or four years straight. Uh, no one could touch us. I was excited about that. Uh, but then one year we showed up, and I never seen these folks. But man, they were four times our size, Eric. Uh, when we looked at them, I thought, man, I'm glad you got these folks here, but where did they come from? How come I've been on teams before that the deck has been stacked? And again, I'm going to say it. I guess stacked the deck. But that's all right. I ain't bitter about it. I just want to make a point. I guess stacked the deck. But nonetheless, here we are going up against it. Our mind didn't change. But there, Eric, I got to thinking about it today. There was three things that really had to sink in. Of course, someone to win a tug of war. Okay. You had to have okay. of these three things. Okay. And if you didn't, you were in trouble. Okay. The first thing I thought about okay. like you can't lose your traction. Okay. If you lose your traction okay. in a tug of war, okay. you might as well let go of the rope because okay. they're going to pull you okay. all over the place. Okay. you got to have strong footing. Okay. you got to have good ground. Okay. Our church, I'm going to say this today. Okay. As a child of God, Oh, uh, we better have some strong uh, uh, grounding in us. Uh, uh, we better have some good footing in us. Uh, uh, we gotta get to the point uh, uh, that we don't lose traction uh, and get bogged down by this life uh, and forget about why we're here. Uh, uh, when we got saved, uh, uh, we're no longer saved to ourselves, uh, uh, but we're saved to Him. Uh, in other words, we are a tool uh, in His arsenal. Uh, I want to be a tool uh, of value. I don't want to be a tool that uh, gets laid to the side, uh, that gets rusty, uh, that never gets used. Uh, I want to be in the spot uh, that God needs uh, for our lives. So listen, when it comes down to losing your traction, number one, when I'm thinking about those things, you can't win if your feet is planted in the world. Eric is a child of God. We can never gain any traction the way that God wants us to have if our feet is planted in this world. Right. He saved us from this world, and he said that you're in the world, but you're no longer of it. In other words, if I go back through the history, and I go back down to the city of Cincinnati, you're going to find on May 31st, 1974, at around 8 o'clock or so in the evening, you're going to find a birth certificate that says Kevin Paul Benny was born. It's there. It's recorded. It's facts. Uh, there's nothing that I remember about it, Eric. Uh, there's nothing that I can tell you about that moment. Uh, there's nothing that I can tell you took place. It says that it's got my feet prints on it. I can't be sure of it, but it's what it says. It says who my parents are. Uh, uh, they raised me, but I can't be sure of it. Uh, uh, but nonetheless, the world records Kevin. Uh, I was born on this day. Uh, I want to say this. Uh, on the day that we're born, uh, I'm into this world. Uh, it's a physical recording. Uh, uh, on the day we're born again, uh, uh, by the Spirit of God, uh, it's a spiritual recording. Uh, uh, it goes on high. Uh, uh, the courthouse get burned uh, in Cincinnati. Uh, uh, they may not have a record anymore, uh, uh, but it can't be taken out uh, of the book uh, uh, that God placed it in uh, uh, when he saved me. Amen. So I want to say this. He planted my feet into something that gave me a foundation. Right. He planted me into something that allowed me to have root. Good soil. Good ground that allow me to flourish. Listen, I want to say this today. It is never more important than right now that you find yourself in a good spiritual church. Amen. It is never more important than it's ever been in your Christian walk than it is today to find yourself a good Christian spiritual church that will teach you, preach you, and tell you everything you need to know about being saved, about growing in grace, and about understanding God's plan for your lives. It's not good enough just to be saved. It's important once you get saved to get in and grow. Amen. And if you don't grow, you're in the wrong place. I don't know why I said that, but I'll tell you anyway. Now listen, I want to say this. It's important that you, you can't gain traction if your feet runs quick to mischief. Right. That's what the Bible says. Matter of fact, it's one of the six things the Lord hates. 
One of the things he says there, he hates in those six things, is a feet that is swift to run to mischief. Yeah. Now listen, I've met some folks in my life, and I'll be honest with you, before I was saved, I was definitely one of those folks that I was swift to find mischief. If there was a way that I could go and find trouble, I would do my best to make sure mom and dad didn't see me. I was out of earshot, out of eyeshot, and I did what I needed to do, and I did what I wanted to do. I even tried that as a child of God, but I warned very fast. I'm not out, out of God's earshot. I'm not out of his eyeshot. He knows right where I'm at. And if I quickly run to that, that's what Paul was preaching about. That's what Paul was saying here. I know what I should do, but this flesh wars against me. And if I'm not careful, this flesh will overtake me. A church, I want us to be a strong church. I want us to be a powerful church. We've got to be a church that's rooted and grounded and ready to go and stand in the battle. Amen. That means it's not going to be popular. So listen. So it's important that we don't lose our traction. But the other thing I realized that it was important that we had to do about some war is we all had to pull the same direction. Yeah. There's two opposing sides in a tug of war. There's this side and there's this side. And you can have 20 people on each side. If all 20 people are pulling the same way, regardless of what the strength is, Eric, for a moment, Everyone's going the same direction. That line's steady. Yeah. That line won't move. We marked it with a flag. We put it there and we put cones out. You had to pull it past those cones. And for a moment, Eric, when the whistle blew, the pull started. The rope was tied. And that flag just stood there. Now, over time, strength prevailed. Over time, having the right traction prevailed. But I will say this, over time, Pulling together makes a difference. Amen. When all the team is pulling the same way, it makes a difference. Right. Now, when you dig in and you're pulling, you're leaning your body back into it, and you're pulling with everything you got. Every inch you gain, you lean back more. Um, that's a good pull. Uh, but you'll see people, Eric, uh, when they start to get tired, uh, when they start to get stressed, uh, they no longer pull this way, uh, they lean this way. Uh, so, in other words, everybody's going this way, uh, but you can look and find that one uh, that's going this direction. Uh, if you're not pulling, uh, then you're pushing. Uh, you're going opposite. A uh, church is important uh, uh, for us to go uh, uh, the same way. Uh, or we'll find ourselves uh, uh, falling under the load. Amen. That's why Paul's telling them. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. I know I want to be right, but because I don't, it's sin that dwells in me. But it goes on to clarify, it's not the inside. It's the flesh. Yeah. It's the flesh. For I know that in me, that is my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. No good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. In other words, I know the right thing to do. But this flesh holds me back. Not only does it hold me back, but it also gets to a spot that I try to find out the right way, and I can't find it. Because this flesh starts raining down. Yeah. You ever been there spiritually, Brother Randy, in your life? Yes. To where maybe one day you were high on that. God has just moved in every way. Yeah. He's just showed up big in your life. The things that you've been praying for is prayer after prayer after prayer. He just answered it. That's the way it goes. Those moments that you prayed for, God, give me somebody to witness to, they show up knocking at your door. Those folks that you never thought you could ever get them to listen to anything about the gospel, they show up and they say, you know what? I just need prayer. I don't know what else to do. Can you pray for me? Can you have your church pray for me? And you begin to pray and you feel heaven move and Eric, you're high on that Everything feels great. Everything's going the way that it needs to go. You know what happens? We get comfortable with that. 
You know what happens? Do you comfortable with that feeling? Like, I don't get me wrong. I believe we can live that way. Uh, but I'm saying in this flesh, uh, we get comfortable thinking uh, the next day we get up, it's going to be the same way. Uh, the next day after that, it's going to be the same way. Hey, we're still in a battle. Uh, we're still fighting. Uh, that means it's not going to be easy. Uh, God worked it out today. Uh, but we got to seek Him out tomorrow and have Him work out that day. That's why Paul said, I'm trying. I've looked everywhere, and I can't find a way. So listen, when you're pulling together, it's not an individual pull, it's a team pull. I remember one youth Olympics, we had one guy, big guy, big guy, strap that rope around him and said, go ahead, kids, all you little ones, get up there. And you pull against me. 300 pound guy, full of muscles. And then little kids got up there, and there must have been 15, 20 of them. And they started pulling, and he just had that wrapped around his waist, and he just sat back and just leaned there. They could not move that guy. They pulled, they tugged, they screamed, they hollered, they dug in. They were just not moving. The weight was way too big. So you know what happened? Some of them just set up quick. <laughs> Some of the little ones just dropped the rope. And I remember this. Come down to the big guy against the little boy. That little boy was not giving up. There's no way physically he's going to move that guy. It's impossible. But I remember him giving everything he had. I remember him wrapping that rope around his little body. And him pulling this way, he turned and tried to run that way. <laughs> But it was a useless pull. But he wasn't going to quit. Finally, somebody had to go over and look at that big guy and say, let him, let him win. Let him win. So if he took off running, that rope came out, and all of you win. <laughs> Sometimes in our Christian life, things begin to boggle us in this flesh. We begin to pull with everything we got in mind. We're tugging and we're pulling. But we're pulling against something that we can't win against. Church, we're never going to win against this flesh. Now, when I say that, I use this cautiously. I'm not saying we cannot overcome it, because we can. I'm saying if we don't let what's in us do all the pulling and tugging, and we try to do it ourselves, we're never going to win. But you know what happens, Eric? That same little fella that was pulling and running, a couple of the other little kids seeing that he didn't give up, and they come running back to the rope. And they grabbed a hold of that rope and they started pulling too. And you know what? That big guy that thought it was just real easy standing there, because of that one little guy pulling against him that was never going to move, wasn't paying attention when the other two grabbed on. And it moved him. Church, there is power in God's people. There is power in His church here. And when we're all pulling the same way, and we're all doing what God needs us to do. It's important because there's victory ahead. We might not see it in the first pull. We might not see it in the second pull. And there might be some strong pulls we got to give. But there's victory in that. Yeah. Listen, we're going to come to a close. Jerry, get ready for a song. We'll say this. We'll move right along with where we're at there. In this last one. If you're going to have victory in this tug of war, it's vicious. You're going to have to have some tenacity. Some, I'm not going to quit inside of us. I'm not going to quit singing because I still got a song. I'm not going to quit teaching because I still got a lesson. I'm not going to quit preaching because I still got a message. I'm not going to quit testifying because I still got my testimony. I'm just not going to quit. No matter what comes at me, I'm not going to quit. Yeah. If we have some of that through the authority of God, God will be there every time. Paul understood that in his flesh, he had no power. Paul understood it was a vicious tongue of war from the inward man to the outward man. That I find in a law that when I would go to do good, evil is present with me. 
For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But he goes on to say this, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with that mind, I myself serve the law of God. But with this flesh, it's going to be law of sin. But with my mind, my spiritual mind, with my heart, I'm just going to serve God. So listen, I don't know what you're facing, what you're going through, what's happening in your life, but I will tell you this. If you're saved by the grace of God, there's a total war that's happening right now. You know to do good, you want to do good, but this flesh will get it. You want to do the right thing, you want to pull the right direction, you want to get good, strong footing, but you can't. You get pulled off balance. The only way you're going to find that peace, the only way you're going to find that comfort, that hope and that help that you need is in Jesus Christ. When we get on our knees, we can learn to stand. When we get down to the point where we know we can't go no farther, God is always right there. So as they sing, I'm going to ask you, if you feel like there's anything on your heart, anything you feel like you need to get out of your way, if you're tired of this tug of war that just seems like it's a never-ending battle, understand you're going to have it until you leave this life. But the good news is, Jesus lives in you. And what he's done on the inside cannot be removed. It cannot be erased. It cannot be downplayed. It is victory in your soul. When I'm living this life, I'm living this life not for me, not for what I want, but for Him. If you're not living your life the right way, no wonder your life is a tough one. If you're not thinking and placing God first in your life, and the decisions you've got, and the things that you're facing, no wonder. You're losing your balance. No wonder the tug of war is mowing over. Get to the spot where you stand and say, God, I need you. All realize, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. In this flesh, I'll never do it. In this flesh, I won't succeed. In this flesh, there's battles and tribulations. But in God, I'm more than a conqueror. In God, I am victorious. In God, it's not even my battle. It's his. Let him win your battles. Just like a tree that's planted by the water, I shall not be moved. He moves on our hearts. We love you and we appreciate you. See if I got anything we need to say or do right now. All right, let's be together. Uh, much in prayer for our services coming up Sunday. Very excited to see everybody get back into the house of God. Uh, we do understand and we know um, that there are those that won't be able to be with us for health situations, and uh, we sure understand that. We love you. Um, you stay home, you get healthy, and we'll see you back here real soon. Um, for those that are able to be here, come back. For those that are able to be here and want to serve the Lord, come back. We want to let God just move us. So church, pray hard, be ready. Um, again, we want to send out... Uh, this to everybody this evening from Olive Ranch. Uh, we love you and appreciate you. Uh, as a reminder, we do not own the rights to any of these songs that are here. Uh, we do have a copyright for both live streams as well as a copyright for our singing. Um, and we're looking forward to what God's going to do. So, uh, until next time, we love you. God bless from Olive Ranch. We'll see you.